Welcome to the third part of this character creation series. So in this part we're going to be finally rigging our little character. Uh, first thing I want to do is get rid of this UV window. I'm just going to right click on the split here and say join area. And I also want to drag the character up just so that he's standing nicely on the sort of base of the scene. I can just press Shift C to make sure the cursor is centered, Shift Control Alt C, and just say origin to 3D cursor so that the origin is now centered nicely uh, at the base as well. Um, let's press Shift A and add in a single bone armature. I'm just going to drag this up. And we can see that it's currently being hidden by the mesh. So if we just go into the armature display properties, we can turn on X ray. And uh, that's much better. So in edit mode on the, on the armature, we can just uh, go into side view, drag this up to sort of about the chest, where the chest starts, drag this up to the neck. Give him a little neck bone as well and uh, then drag this all the way up to the top of the head, just something like that. And uh, let's left click just to um, position the cursor sort of around the shoulder, Shift A to add in a bone, and we can drag this down to the elbow, position this from side view as well, and extrude this out to the base of the hand, just always uh, going into side view afterwards to position it again. I'll drag this out for the hand bone and two bones for the fingers. And now just to help us position the thumb, because that's a bit tricky, um, let's go into edit mode on the actual mesh and alt right click to select all the loops around there and press shift S, cursor to selected, to center the cursor between those uh, selected vertices. Now if we go back into edit mode on the armature, we can just press Shift A to add in a bone over there. And we can just try position this at the sort of first joint here of the thumb. And then extrude it out again to the tip of the thumb. Just something like that looks pretty good. Um, let's add in some leg bones. So I'll just left click over here by the legs. And drag this bone down to the knee. Also positioning this from side view. Drag this down to the base of the foot, give it a little foot bone and a toe bone as well. Just something simple like that. And uh, I quickly want to select these two bones and just say S, X, 0, just to make sure these are perfectly straight down. And uh, now these are all of our main bones. Um, we're going to have lots more controlling bones. Uh, and we also need to do a hat bone later on, but uh, let's not worry about that now. So what we should worry about now is the rather laborious process of naming all the bones. So um, this really is quite important. Let's go ahead and call this head. This here is the, what have I got selected? I want to select the neck. Uh, we can call this chest. This is maybe the, uh, the torso. Um, the most important part is when you start naming the bones that are actually going to be mirrored over onto the other side. Um, here we're going to keep the naming convention of upper arm dot L for left arm. So just call the bone whatever you want. I'm going to call this lower arm, but just always have a dot capital L at the end, um, which is going to make it much easier when we flip the bones over. I'm going to call this hand dot L. Uh, maybe fingers o one dot L. Fingers o two dot L. Thumb o one dot L. And thumb o two dot L. And we're not finished yet. We've got the upper leg, the lower leg, the foot. And lastly, the toes. All right, so with that done, um, let us see. We can go, once we're in object mode, we can press control tab to switch into pose mode. And you can see if we move this torso bone around, um, the legs and the arms are currently completely detached. So let's fix that. We'll just select the legs and the arms, and then shift right click to select this torso bone and press control P. Actually, hold on, I'm making a mistake. We want to select just this bone and uh, control P to parent that with an offset to the torso bone. And the arms we want to parent with an offset to this uh, chest bone over here. 
All right, so now they're following it around nicely. Um, let's add in some inverse kinematics for our leg. So uh, I'm just going to, in edit mode, select this uh, little joint over here and just press E to extrude a bone out along the Y axis. Very importantly now, select this bone, press Alt P and say clear parent, otherwise everything is going to go absolutely haywire. Um, this bone is a controlling bone. It doesn't actually directly affect the mesh, it just controls other bones. So we want to turn off deform in the bone properties over here. And let's call this leg ik.l. And uh, we're going to go into pose mode and we're going to have this ik bone selected. Then we're going to shift right click to select the lower leg bone. And then we're going to press shift i to add an IK to the active bone. You can see the active bone turns yellow because it's now got an IK constraint, which we can find in the uh, bone constraints tab. And here we want to change the chain length to two. And immediately you can see that now using this little IK bone, we can move the leg around realistically. So that's very handy for animating. Um, what we want to do to fix this weird thing that's going on here is add in what's called a pole target. So we can just uh, grab this joint over here, this knee joint, and just extrude a bone out along the y-axis, select it, and once again clear the parent, and we'll just drag it out a little way along the y-axis, and let's call this the leg pole target dot L, and this too is not a deformation bone, so we'll unclick that, and uh, now Back on this uh, bone constraints tab, we can find this pull target field, and we want to use a bone from the armature, and the bone is called pull target. All right, so immediately we can see that uh, this has gone a little bit haywire, it's all rotated funny. Um, first thing I want to do before we fix that is to select all of our bones, press Control N, and we're going to recalculate the roll along the X, the Y, and the Z axis. So just go through each of those, Control N, X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. And now you can see, um, all right, so it's rotated 90 degrees in the other direction now. We can just use this pull angle in the bone constraints, set this to 90 or whatever you need to set it to to make it completely straight. And now this is working nicely. You can see from front view, we can use this a little pole target to aim the knee. So that's all very nice. Having done that, let's uh, make a new bone, which uh, starts from the heel here. And this is actually going to be our leg control bone. So um, we're not going to use this little bone over here. This is, uh, this is actually going to be controlled by our leg control bone. So in edit mode, let's add in a new bone. And I want to position it so that it's completely straight along here. So um, let's just press period or uh, full stop, whatever you want to call it, to change our rotation to around the 3D cursor. And we can just press R and negative 90 to rotate it down like that. And before I forget, let's press comma to change our uh, pivot point back to the normal setting. And we can just drag this out, something like that. And let's call this um, leg control dot L. And this too is not a deformation bone, so we'll uncheck that. And now we want to parent this IK bone to this leg control bone. So control P, keep offset. And uh, now you can see that we can control the leg with this, with this bone uh, nicely here. Um, the one problem is that the foot is currently rotating with the leg, which is um, very annoying when you're trying to animate things. So what we want to do is just change the parent of the foot to this bone here, keep offset, and now you can see the, the foot remains flat and we can rotate it easily with this foot control bone. Okay, but um, that's not problem solved. That introduces a new problem, which is uh, the foot now detaches from the, uh, from the leg, which is absolutely horrifying. So there is a way we can fix this. We uh, go into pose mode, and we first select our lower leg bone, then we shift right click to select our foot bone, and now we press shift control C to add constraint with targets, and we say uh, copy location. All right, immediately our foot jumps up to the top there. 
Um, so let's select our foot and go into the Bone Constraints tab. And we want to change the copy location to not go from the head of the bone, but to actually go from the tail of the bone. So we just drag this slider all the way across to one. And now you can see that the control bones will become detached, but that's fine. But the actual foot bones uh, that will be controlling the mesh do not come detached from the leg. All right, so that's good progress. But um, one other control we want to add in for the foot to make uh, animating easier is a foot roll bone, which will allow us to sort of roll the foot up um, like that onto the sort of uh, ball of the foot, which we use a lot, of course, in things like uh, walk cycles and run cycles. Um, so things are going to get a little bit messy here. So just pay attention. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll try to go quite slowly. Um, we're going to select these two bones we go to press Shift D to duplicate them. Um, in fact, before I do that, I'll just press uh, Command Z to undo that. This is going to be a lot easier to see if I change the bone display type to B bone. And uh, I'll go into the object properties here and just change this to wire, the, uh, the draw type. Okay, so now I'll go again uh, in edit mode, Shift D to duplicate these two bones. And I'll press Alt S just to, um, sorry, Control Alt S to scale these up and maybe I'll scale these two down a bit. So um, just remember the two new bones that we've created, these are the big ones and uh, neither of these are deformation bones, we can just uh, unclick that and uh, this bone over here we can remove the copy location constraint, it's not meant to have that and uh, let's call this bone our foot roll dot L uh, just turn off deformation. It seems that you can't uh, turn off multiple bones deformation at the same time, which is pretty annoying. Um, but, okay, something to, to keep in mind. You have to do it individually. Um, so this is our footroll.l, and this is our toescontrol.l. And now we want to take our toes control, and we want to parent it with offset to the leg control. All right, and we want to now take this bone, this uh, foot roll bone, and you can see if we rotate it in pose mode, it's currently rotating from here. We want it to rotate from over here at its tail. So all we need to do is in edit mode, just rotate it around 180 degrees. Now you can see it's rotating from where we want it to. And now in edit mode, we want to select our IK bone. We want to shift right click to select our foot roll bone, control P, and we can make them uh, we can parent them, I'll just say parent, connected. Now you can see that this foot roll bone is uh, rotating the foot and it's pivoting from the correct position. But um, our foot is still not behaving how we want it to. Uh, we want this to keep aiming down at the, uh, at the toes control bone. So we'll use another IK. We'll uh, select the toes control. Shift right click the toes and press Shift I once again to add in an IK. And everything goes completely crazy, but don't worry, we can fix that. We just go into the bone constraints. We change uh, the chain length up to one, and we turn off use tail. All right, so now as we rotate this, you can see the, the uh, foot keeps pointing downwards. Um, we just want this foot bone not to rotate so we can just add in one final constraint. We select our toes control bone and then our toes bone. Shift control C and we add in a copy rotation constraint. So now at last, everything is working nicely. We've got this nice foot roll. Um, this is moving around. Uh, remember the, the control bones do become uh, detached, but that's not a problem as long as our actual mesh bones don't become detached. Um, and let me select everything. Um, and if we move the, uh, the torso bone down, the foot behaves um, very nicely, just staying flat on the ground. So that's all wonderful. Um, 
what I want to do now is just hide all these extraneous bones that we don't actually control. So uh, that would be the IK bone, um, this bone here, the the uh, the foot control and the toe control. We don't uh, if we don't actually manipulate those directly. So we can just select those and press H to hide them. And now we've just got our control bones here that we're actually manipulating. All right, so with that uh, sort of mess all cleared up, I'm going to go back and change the view to good old octahedral display, which I slightly prefer over B-bone, and uh, going to change the draw type back to solid. Um, let's quickly just position this from front view at the center of the foot. And I think one thing that I forgot to do is, uh, yeah, I forgot to parent the thumb to the hand, so let's quickly go ahead and do that. Um, in this tutorial, I'm not going to be setting up an IK system for the arms, just because I find that when I'm animating the arms, I so rarely actually want to use IK. So if you do want to go ahead and set that up, then it's really just exactly the same thing that we did for the legs, you know, up to the point where we started doing all of that crazy foot stuff. So you just create a IK bone, add an IK constraint to the lower arm, set the chain length to two, create a pole target, all of that stuff um, should be easy enough. So now we're ready to mirror our bones over onto the other side. So let us go into edit mode and just select all these bones that we want to mirror. And uh, let us press shift C to center our cursor. And then we're going to press period or full stop to change the pivot point to around the 3D cursor. And we're going to press shift D to duplicate all of these bones. We can just right click to cancel the transform. And then we're going to flip them over on the x-axis by scaling them to negative 1. So we press S to scale, X for the x-axis, and negative 1 to flip them over. And then we just press Enter to confirm. Now before we do anything else, let's go onto this armature button over here. And just say flip names. And uh, because we were wise enough to uh, keep a consistent naming convention with .l throughout, you can see that Blender has now... Uh, very nicely changed them all to dot .r for the right-hand side, so we don't have to go ahead and rename everything, so that's wonderful. Um, at this point, we should be ready to actually, um, to actually parent our mesh to these bones, so I'm going to save in case for some reason everything goes horribly wrong. Um, now we can just select our mesh, Shift right click to select our armature and press Ctrl P and we're going to parent with automatic weights. Click there. All right. So now in pose mode on the bones, we can hold on, press comma first to change the pivot back. Now we can rotate these around and see how it's behaving. So you can see, yeah, that's, that's not optimal. We're going to have to do some custom weight painting, but um, yeah, it's got the basic idea. This is moving around, we can see the hairs becoming detached there. I'm going to have to fix that. Um, let's look at the legs. All right. Um, we've got a problem where the legs are sort of showing through the, uh, through the clothing there. Um, the bending of the foot is not quite perfect. And of course, we still need to add in a bone for the hat, but we'll do that later on. Okay, this part is actually getting quite long. I'm going to split this into two parts. Um, so in the next part, we'll look at adding in the hat and uh, fixing up all these problems that we've just seen. All right, thanks very much for watching. Cheers.